Hello, my name is Wojciech Zachnik and in this talk I'm going to talk about the attitude-based account of social institutions. This talk aims to investigate the issue of institutional behavior, namely its conforming and violating aspects. The goals will be first to assess assumptions that are built into a leading contemporary theory of social institutions, especially the assumptions that help us to build to explain institutional violations. I will do that under the name of cost-based model. And uh, second, I intend to show the weaknesses and limitations of these assumptions and finally to present an al alternative, more explanatory model of institutional behavior compatible with current state of research. My idea is that normative attitudes help us identify processes relevant for distinguishing conforming and violating behavior. Many researchers recognize that benefits of social institutions rest heavily on the fact that individuals conform to institutions because they solve the collective action or coordination problems where one's decision depends on the expected behavior of others. It holds that some degree of violations might, might be tolerated in specific cases, for instance, when deviations might produce innovations as in the field of art or technology. The presence of widespread departure from the institutional standards leads to their erosion and decline. The rules in equilibrium theory addresses this issue of conformity in two steps. People follow institutional rules because they prescribe a choice of an action that help them coordinate behavior with others and they want to coordinate towards a specific outcome as it is stable and no one can be better off by choosing differently. More specifically, the rules in equilibrium theory offers unified social ontology of institutions where a rule functions as a, as a representation of strategic profile that establishes an equilibrium solution for a given type of social interaction. The familiar cases are familiar cases of institutions involve traffic lights, norms of fair distribution, legal rules, or ethic and dressing conventions. The idea of costs linked with institution is not a new development of the rules in equilibrium theory. It has been acknowledged before in economics that costs have an, an important role for our choice behavior and that institutions help to reduce transaction costs. Alternatively, in psychology and behavioral sciences, researchers understand that costs induced by sanctions are a good deterrent and could be used as an instrument for measuring social norms. However, the novelty in the rules in the equilibrium framework is based on a broader understanding of costs. The main function of the cost is to support a specific equilibrium in the game or even create a new equilibrium. For instance, by changing payoff structure when a Pareto efficient outcome is unstable. Costs in a game aim to explain what discourages people from violating institutions and they cover various processes that affect individual motives and decisions. Internal costs such as guilt and shame or external costs of monetary sanctions or reputational loss. They all characterize a reduction of the value of acts deviating from the institutional regulations. The cost-based model can describe various behavioral patterns by using a single parameter represented formally in the payoff table, which is a useful method for modeling complex situation in a simple way. Here you can see basic principles that determine the model which I call the cost-based model of institutional behavior. Costs are defined as a change in the relative value of choice. Normative force of institutions is modeled as a cost that modifies the payoff of the game. Institutional violations are deterred by negative incentives and conforming behavior is based on individual's aversion to negative sanctions as well as his or her positive motivation towards an institutional outcome. These four statements broadly capture normativity associated with the institutional behavior. 
and they describe how we follow or possibly depart from that behavior. The main idea of the cost-based model rests upon the assumption representative for the rational choice theory. An agent's preferences, influenced by various incentives, reasons and stimuli, are represented numerically by the utility function. As a result of this, the actions agent considers performing to achieve the institutional equilibrium of the game carry several different kinds of costs, each of which can be understood as a change in the relative value of the choice. Institutions not only specify a strategic profile that prevents a coordination failure, but also block other alternatives that might seem appealing to some agents, such as risk-dominant actions or strategies leading to competing equilibrium states. The fact that someone ought to act as demanded by the institution is represented in the payoff structure of the interaction, and the sense of ought is limited to ultimately rooted in the instrumental rationality. Overall, an individual is discouraged for the opportunity of violating, transgressing or disobedience due to negative costs incurred in connection with the non-institutional actions, and his or her conformity with an institutional rule is based on reluctance to face these costs together with acknowledgement of legitimacy or validity of the rule. The principles therefore describe elements of the model that generally aims to explain conforming and violating institutional behavior. They represent a substantial subset of claims incorporated in the rules in equilibrium theory, but some of them could be relevant also for other theoretical approaches to ontology of social institutions. Before I move to the next section, I would like to illustrate the institutional and cost-related processes using a simple example. Imagine going to the theater. As a spectator in the auditorium, you have a few options for what to do during the play. Some people quietly watch the play, others express their enjoyment and appreciate the performance by applause. But several might carry out a private disruptive action, for instance, eating a snack or checking a phone. Assume that pre-institutional preferences of people reflect their motivation to coordinate their reaction with others in the auditorium. In some countries, people enthusiastically appreciate acting in a good situational joke by an applause, but in others, they rather sit quietly until the show is over. In terms of behavior, being silent or applauding are quite contrasting behavior patterns, but if coordination is achieved, people are happy to follow any of them. The issue is, of course, how to achieve socially beneficial state. And the rule in equilibrium theory approaches cases like this in a simple manner. Institutions are devices that help us to achieve and sustain coordination by means of the profile of strategies in equilibrium. For instance, a social norm of being quiet during a play in a theater is a rule that prescribes silent behavior and restricts all the other actions violating a required standard. It fulfills the institutional fun function of coordinating individual behavior towards a stable outcome and normative force of institutions is described in terms of costs that modify the pre-institutional structure of interaction. Costs can be manifested in various ways, sanctions, guilt, reputation loss, each having different causal mechanism and underlying processes. Yet all these categories are unified in the cost-based model by their effect on the utility of individuals. They change the rel relative value of choice. Consequently, the function of institutional norm, of, of social norm of silence, can be characterized by the following table. You can see a simple parametrical change created a new decision situation where private disruptive action is no longer rational. And although bilateral uploading still presents a viable alternative, it is Pareto inefficient and implies risk of costly outcomes if it fails. For instance, imagine Peter 
might feel regret and his reputation will suffer considerable damage after he expresses an enjoyment while Julia quietly watches the play. These effects are summarized in the reduction of express enjoyment action evaluation and thus making the choice less attractive. Based on these modified preferences, Peter should certainly reconsider his action and follow a norm as it maximizes his utility. To summarize, the cost-based model captures various processes associated with the institutions by the single measure, costs. It captures very broadly why agents ought to conform to a specific institutional rule based on their instrumental rationality, though it completely leaves out the details of decision-making process, psychology and societal influences. The model therefore offers great tool for representing coordinative and cooperative structure of institutional interactions and help us understand their function and persistence. Peter ought to conform with the norm of silence because it fulfills his preference upon reflecting all potential costs that are associated with other options. Violations are rationally ruled out because they are not plausible behavior if one wants to maximize utility function. My argument against the cost-based model rests on a simple yet general idea that social institutions affect a spectrum of mechanisms of which preferences are only one of many. Normativity, understood as costs, influences exclusively, exclusively payoff related aspects of the interactions. The cost-based model reshapes various effects into the one-dimensional consequence of adding or subtracting utility. Contrary to this view, I hold that to better understand and explain conforming and violating institutional behavior, it is necessary to include cognitive and attitudinal factors lying outside pure motivational approach. The cost-based model identifies deterrence of violating behavior solely in terms of relative value chains of actions and consequently any violator must be immune to such costs. A person who violates an institutional action must be sure that he is in a position where his disobedience will not be punished. That is, the chosen path is not significantly affected by the payoff reduction. Costs in general are a powerful mechanism covering heterogeneous processes in the institutional domain, but they relate only to the one game theoretical aspect, the utility function. It would be quite surprising if the whole impact that institutions have on conforming and or, or violating behavior lay in the single parameter of the interactions. It seems rather plausible that institutional role lies in the adjustment of strategy, strategy set, payoffs, partner selection and informational structure of the interaction. Therefore, the multidimensional institutional effect seems like a good alternative proposal. First, social institutions frequently specify a set of suitable individuals to whom the prescribed conduct is to be directed. There are many common examples of this institutional effect. Some are regularly established, such as the attorney-client privilege, or that being a driver implies that one ought to provide help assistance in case of car accident. Others are rather informal, as a food-sharing norm applying exclusively to group members or parents' obligations to keep their own children under, under control in restaurants. All these cases illustrate an important dimension of the social institutions. Not only do they prescribe and restrict vertical behavior via costs, but they also limit influence regarding specific parties and agents, the mechanism I call the agent selection aspect of institutions. A social institution defines a set of suitable agents to whom it prescribes a specific course of action. Under many circumstances, the set of suitable interacting partners will be vague and without clear boundaries. Yet there is always a sense in which one may consider an application of the institutional rule outside of its domain of application in terms of the agent selection. If social institutions 
specify individuals to whom it addresses its normative requirements, then there are correct and incorrect ways of institutional behavior. As a result of that, a person may violate social institutions without deviating from the required behavioral pattern, simply because his action is targeted improperly. And second, a set of strategies of a game is traditionally considered determined and it presents a range of options people choose from. Any institutional outcome is determined out of the specified set of free institutional actions modified by costs, where a rule picks out a strate strategic profile that secure an equilibrium outcome. However, this standard view is built on the idea that rules are prescribing the specific actions, which is clearly an incomplete picture disregarding a restrictive nature of many institutions. There are simply situations when institutions not only prescribe doing X, but also limit choices by saying not to do Y. For instance, the social norm of form remain quiet and do not disturb during a theatric play. Others norm might be sharing food when one is not allowed, allowed to touch others' food. Therefore, there might be a conflict between different prescriptions, but some institutions will regulate the choices boundaries. So there are several implications of what I just said. So the central line of the research in social institutions explains normativity and violations in terms of costs, understood very broadly as a relative value change, where costs has a very broad causal basis. For instance, they include emotions, reputations, sanctions, but they are all translated directly into utilities. And uh, I try to identify, identify several different problems with this. Cost-based model fails to cover, cover a full spectrum of institutional behavior, institutional violations. It seems to me that social institutions also specify who to cooperate and coordinate with. And they eliminate certain options from the set of strategies. And these two aspects are completely neglected from the cost-based model and the rules and equilibrium theory. So the question is, what next? I call for the extension of purely motivational account. And it seems to me there has been already few attempts to do this. For instance, Big Kieri attempt to do uh, to extend the model of social norms with conditional preference and beliefs, or more recently, Frank Hendrick's uh, rules and equilibrium theory uh, with preferences conditional on expectations about sanctions and normative rules. So it seems to me there is a space for the attitude-based account where a rule component is somehow underdeveloped in the contemporary theory. It presents thin concepts. So the rule is understood very thinly as a representation of strategic profile, and it is normative in a weak sense of cause and instrumental rationality. Instead, I think we may reconsider this and propose a thick concept of rule, where rule is understood as a cluster of normative attitudes. I believe we can at least identify two distinct, distinctive normative attitudes, acceptance and guidance. Why is it important? Well, it seems to me that individuals accept that certain state is desirable and acknowledges a legitimacy of corrective attitudes toward the state A, and this normative attitude might be dissociated with, from the guidance aspect of the rule following, when agent and normative relations to a, the action. So there is an action, action prescription part and desirability of certain state. And uh, where does it follow? I think we can explain the rules in equilibrium theory if we develop rule domain more specifically. So I believe one can see that rules are not only strategic profiles, but they have distinctive deontic structure that is underdeveloped in contemporary theories. And if we distinguish normative acceptance and normative guidance, we can therefore explain various effects institutional have on our behavior. For instance, 
agent selection might be aspect that is relevant for normative acceptance. So if it ought to be the case that people remain quiet and do not disturb during the play, it may actually influence the way how I subscribe this rule to relevant agents. And normative guidance attitude influences our choice boundaries. It may limit our choices. For instance, some choices might be forbidden. It may restriction. It may restrict our action space. So even before we think about the payoff table and the cost-based effects, some choices might be eliminated from the strategy set because normative guidance actually leads to this effect. I know this is a very rough picture, but I'm quite running out of time. So uh, this is the idea I have in mind and it's still work in progress. But what I think it's, uh, it's the main argument of this talk is that we should take care of rural domain because it might be more refined in its nature than actually it is represented in the contemporary theory. So to summarize my talk, I tried to explain that cost-based model of institutional behavior covers various processes by a single measure, costs. Although it provides good motivational account that includes functional aspects and persistence explanation, it seems to me insufficient in terms of selection of cooperative partners and uh, restriction on the set of choices, and it completely misses the distinctive normative structure of rules. And the, the attitude-based account complements the cost-based model by allowing to keep motivational analysis, but refi it refines the normative aspect of the rule. And it also provides a scaffolding for deeper, deeper psychological framework that includes normative cognition, reasoning, and it also includes neglected aspects of institutions. Thank you.